Hello, family. My name is Deacon Brandon Bolden from One Church at Bethel's Family. I currently serve as a deacon and as a lead with the high school group of the youth ministry. Today's devotional is titled Peace for the Troubled Heart, and it comes from John chapter 14, verse 27, which reads, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled or fearful. Jesus Christ loves us so dearly that not only did he die on that rugged cross for our sins, but he also left us instructions and resources to accomplish his divine will for our lives. One of these resources is peace, and it is one of a kind. How so? I'm glad you asked. There are three things that the Holy Spirit is revealing here in this text. One, Jesus Christ is the only peace that we need. Hence, one of the reasons he is also known as the Prince of Peace, according to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. This peace that Jesus Christ gives costs nothing, but yet is priceless. Like salvation, this peace is free to all that are willing to accept it. Number two, Jesus grants us peace that the world can't give. The world can't grant us peace, straight up. The world can only give us temporarily satisfaction through things, people, accolades, accomplishments, and etc but those things can't provide peace. Your spouse can't provide peace. Your money can't provide peace, but only Jesus Christ can. This is proven when you hear about millionaires and billionaires who have more money than one can dream of, but is so stressed to their core, making them the least bit happy that they can't even enjoy it. To back up this fact even further, the Bible has produced many receipts to prove it. Let's just look at one. Look at the woman who had the issue of blood. The Bible says that she spent all she had with the doctors and physicians to heal her, but it didn't work. Because of her condition, she couldn't even be around friends, family, anybody for that matter. She couldn't even go to the temple to worship, all because she was considered unclean. One can even conclude that this woman was suffering not only physically, but also mentally and spiritually because she was going through this storm in isolation without any support or fellowship. This is what is known in today's society as suffering in silence. Jesus came to town and in an act of faith and sheer desperation all mixed together, this woman touched the hem of his garment and was immediately healed, but not just physically, but also mentally and spiritually. She was relieved of her ailments. She was restored, which translated into her receiving that peace that only Jesus Christ could give. Now, none of her money could do it, but Jesus Christ could and he did. And three family. Jesus has promised to us to give us that peace that surpasses all understanding, according to Philippians chapter four, verse seven. That peace is what keeps us sane, steadfast, and immovable when we're treading through the storms of life. In this text, Jesus knew what road lied ahead for his disciples, and he wanted to make sure during this conversation with them that they knew of the peace in him, which was always accessible to comfort and assist through their own unique journeys. In closing, please remember family, that this peace Jesus is speaking of in this text is so great that no matter the trials and tribulations that we may go through, it's his peace that will have us smiling and thriving to a point that no one would be even able to tell that we're in the midst of a storm. Let us pray. Dear most wise and merciful Father, the one true living God, we come to you in the most humblest manner we know how, asking that even when we're going through the raging storms of life, that we stay cognizant of what this scripture, John chapter 14, verse 27, that flowed right out of the mouth of Jesus is saying. Please give us the discipline to not only be mindful of what it says, but to be able to apply it during those times. For we know that knowing is half the battle. We also know that your word is true and can't come back void. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for loving us. For your kingdom, for your glory, it's in the incomparable name of Jesus Christ, we do pray, amen.